Hello guys. So today we're going to be discussing a couple of really interesting things. Uh, one is uh, functional equations, obviously, and when you combine that with the modulus function. So in a way, it's going to be like an intersection of a uh, little bit of algebra and calculus. So yeah, this is quite an interesting problem, and let's start. This is problem number eight from the ISI entrance exam in 2015. So last problem of the exam. And in this video, we're going to be discussing modulus functions, functional equations, some interesting observations of geometrical interpretations, the cheat solution, right? Book solutions for ISI and CMI. And at the end, a similar but charging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so what does it say? It says us to find all functions f mapping from reals to reals, such that the modulus of this thing is twice of mod x minus y, right? So modulus, I'm sure you're aware of it. So uh, modulus of let's say 2.3 is 2.3 it essentially converts any negative number into positive right uh, yeah the, the output is essentially always positive so for example mod x you know more formally mod x is essentially um, x if x is greater than equal to zero and mod x is actually negative x if x is less than zero there's maybe some formal things that uh, that are good to know but in this question in this question particularly they've given us this modulus of f of x minus f of y, right? Is equal to twice of mod of x minus y. Okay, great. So what can we do? So now I'm probably gonna discuss uh, an important concept called injectivity, right? Injectivity, right? So what is injectivity? The property is called as injectivity and the function that follow it are called injective functions. So let's say for any function, so for a function f, if f of a is equal to f of b and that implies a is equal to b then f is said to be injective okay so um yeah so for any 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 function in general if if f of a is equal to f of b and that necessarily implies that a is equal to b then f is said to be injective right one on one great so let's, let's try to maybe prove a little bit of injectivity over here. Maybe let's try to see if the function is injective or not. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to let f of a is equal to f of b. And after I take this assumption, if I'm able to conclude that a is equal to b, then f is, uh, f is obviously injective, right? f is an injective function. Great. So now that I've assumed this f is equal to f of b, I'm going to plug in uh, x equal to a and y is equal to b. And when I plug that into the functional equation, I get modulus of f of a minus, model, minus f of b is equal to twice of a minus b and since f of a is equal to f of b so this is obviously zero so twice of mod a minus b is equal to zero mod a minus b is equal to zero and the only way this can happen is if a is equal to b so essentially uh, we assumed f of a is equal to f of b and then we implied that a is equal to b so therefore i can comfortably write that f is injective right we can essentially that f is injective great now, now, now there's an, uh, actually an interesting observation. The observation is that if f of x is a solution, then f of x plus c is also a solution. You know, and um, how do we prove that? Well, it's, it's kind of intuitive actually. Uh, you can just, uh, maybe, maybe the intuition works a lot of way, but maybe let's just discuss a little, a little bit of a formal proof of it. Let's just see why it works. Right? Let's just try and maybe prove that. So proof, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to define g of x is equal to f of x minus f of 0. So if I plug in x equal to 0 over here, I'll get g of 0 is equal to f of 0 minus f of 0. So g of 0 is 0. Right? This is an uh, this is a result that we can easily conclude from here. Now, now what do we have over here? So f of x is essentially g of x plus g of 0. Right? What is f of y? It will be nothing but g of y plus g of 0. Great. So f of x minus f of y will be nothing but g of x minus g of y. Right? Because these two things will be cancelled. Is equal to twice of mod x minus y. Okay. That's great. Now I'm going to just plug in y is equal to 0 and x equal to x. 
simple substitution. So I'll get mod of g of x minus g of 0, which is 0, is equal to twice of mod x. So essentially, when I have mod of g of x is equal to twice of mod x, so therefore, g of x has to be plus of minus 2x. Right? So g of x has to be plus of minus 2x because when you take mod, everything becomes positive anyways. So g of x has to be plus of minus 2x. Now what is f of x? f of x is g of x plus f of 0. Right? So what will be f of x plus of minus 2x plus f of 0? And what is f of 0? f of 0 is nothing but a constant, right? You plug in 0 into the function, you get a, you'll obviously get a constant value. So f of x is equal to plus or minus 2x plus c, right? So f of x can either be um, 2x plus c or it can be negative 2x plus c, right? Now, well, this is good up to this point, but like, like you discussed many times before, there's this pointwise trap. You know that keeps coming in the middle, and uh, it can really, uh, it can really mess up a lot of things. So maybe let's try and discuss that also. It's, it's quite trivial. The method is again same as always, but let's just discuss that. So we got g of x equal to plus of minus two x. Now let's say uh, for some a comma b, g of a is not equal to two a, and g of b is not equal to minus two b. That essentially means that g of a is equal to negative two a and g of b is 2b, right? Pretty simple. And now when I just plug that back into the functional equation, I'll get, uh, I'll just put in like uh, x equals to a and y is equal to b. And when I do that, I'll get uh, g of a minus g of b and the modulus of course, equal to twice of mod a minus b. And what if g of a is negative 2a and g of b is a negative 2b? This is twice of mod a minus b. The two and two get canceled. So mod of negative a negative b is equal to mod of a minus b. And this is only possible if a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. Because you see, when a is equal to 0, I'll get mod of negative b is equal to this thing. That's absolutely true, right? Because both will be, uh, both the sign will be same when you open it. And otherwise, if, uh, if, if b is 0, then I'll get mod of negative a is equal to mod of a. Which is again true, both will again open in positive, so it's, it won't make any difference. So essentially, the conclusion that we can find is, um, this can this can only be true if and only if a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. But we had essentially assumed that g of a is negative 2a and g of a is not 2a. Similarly, we had assumed g of b to be 2b and g of b to not be 2b, not be negative 2b, right? And here we're essentially saying that a has to be 0 or b has to be 0. So if a is 0, then we get g of 0 is equal to 0. And we get again, g of e 0 is not equal to 0. And if b is equal to 0, we get g of 0 is 0. And here we get g of 0 is not equal to 0. In both cases, we get a contradiction. Right? As simple as that. In both cases, we get a contradiction. Therefore, uh, it is not piecewise. g is not piecewise. Right? So essentially, g of x equals to um, plus or minus 2x for all x. That's essentially what we had intended to prove. And yes, uh, from that we uh, uh, derived a value of f of x, which we had to find, which is plus or minus 2x plus c. Okay, wait. So this is this is uh, kind of uh, this is kind of an interesting thing. And um, another thing that you can maybe note is Lagrange's mean value theorem. So what I was talking about earlier was like a cheat solution, right? Cheat solution. What is the cheat solution? Cheat solution is obviously not a perfectly correct solution. But if you do this, maybe you can get a kind of like a good idea of uh, how to proceed with the with, with the actual solution, with the formal solution. So um, to, to know the cheat solution, let's first discuss uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem, you know. Lagrange mean value theorem. And this is commonly known as LMVT. Right? So it's a, it's, it's a pretty famous theorem. You know, the application of derivatives and uh, it states that if a function f is continuous if function f is continuous in a to b right keep in uh, keep in mind this is a closed interval and differentiable differentiable in the open interval a to b right then it says that there exists x equals to c such that f prime c is equal to fb minus fa divided by b minus a. 
this is what lagrand mean value theorem says and it consists like a geometrical proof or something which is kind of important for this question as well it's, it's quite interesting if you, if you check that out but 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 if you actually check the question what was the question it was mod of f of x minus f of y is equal to twice mod x minus y and you know what what really happens over here if is i can just rewrite this as this right mod of this thing divided by mod of x minus y is equal to two. So, 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 essentially, 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 f prime c is taking the value of 2 and pretty much we have similar things like this other than the fact that we have a modular sign over here. So, essentially, f prime, f of x minus f of y divided by x minus y, right, is equal to plus of minus 2. And what is this? This is nothing but f prime of x, right? f prime of x is 2 plus or minus 2. And if I just integrate that on both sides, I get f of x equal to plus minus 2 plus c. 2x plus c. Right? It's, it's a simple integration. But but here's the thing. So we got f of x equal to plus minus 2x plus c. Right? From the earlier, our formal solution, which is the correct solution, of course. We also got f of x equal to plus minus 2x plus c. So could you have done this in the exam? This seems a lot simpler. Like, you know, this configuration. When you look at this question, the first thing that comes to mind is Lagrange mean value theorem. Like, literally. That's, the, that's like... Probably one of the most first things that clicks to your mind if you study calculus. But here's the thing, they've not given that f is differentiable. Right? In the question, nowhere is it said that f is continuous, f is differentiable. No, nothing, no such information is given. Right? Okay, from the conclusion, you found that f is a polynomial function, so it's differentiable and all that. But but essentially in the question, it's not given that f is differentiable. So if f is not differentiable, then kind of like the assumptions of this uh, LMVT fails. Right? They, it has to be differentiable. But it's not given the question, so obviously you cannot uh, employ this as your formal solution. However, it gives you a good idea. It gives you, it, it pretty much gives you the answer right up. You know, this thing, that observation that if f of x is a solution, f of x plus, of, plus c is also a solution. This can be easily checked out by this. Right? When you see this, you get the idea that f of x is a solution, f of x plus c is a solution, because you have plus c over there, over here as well. Right? So this is this is why this maybe like this uh, this this kind of like interpretation is quite important. But yeah, essentially, uh, when when solving this, you, you 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 can actually prove that f is differentiable if you make certain additional arguments. But you can't just directly use this because it's not given that f is differentiable in the question. But yeah, uh, you can you can definitely follow this formal uh, formal formal solution above that we provided. And yeah, please uh, maybe like this intuition that uh, uh, if f of x is a solution, then f of x plus c is also a solution. This is also pretty good. We proved that obviously. But if you actually apply rules, uh, I mean, Lagrange mean value theorem over here, you can see that pretty well from here as well. So, yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and let's move on. Okay, so we have certain book suggestions for calculus and ISSEMI, pre-calculus by Tarasov, single variable calculus by I. Maron, playing with graphs, challenges and theorems of pre-college mathematics, mathematical circles, excursion mathematics, and a test of mathematics at 10 plus 2 level. Okay, so we have a similar but challenging problem. And uh, in this, I wanted to determine the number of increasing functions for which modulus of f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to x minus y, mod of x minus y. An increasing function is a function which is obviously always increasing. So if f of x is greater than f of y, then that necessarily means that x is greater than y, right? This is essentially an increasing function. So determine the number of such functions for which, uh, for which this, uh, this condition essentially holds. And yes, if you're able to make any progress on it or if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.